partner with companies from complementary industries to expand market reach and offer different services and information to your own audience. This works particularly well when the products or services are complementary to your own and provide your audience with a way to save time, money, or resources. For example, Hello and welcome back. Thought it was about time I jumped back behind the mic for a solo episode. Been a while, hasn't it? But this episode has been sparked by the previous 20 or so guests who've given up their valuable time to chat about topics and news that are disrupting the construction industry. And I'm grateful for every single one of them. With this in mind, I wanted to turn your attention to one thing that connects all of this together, that binds the market together. And in my mind, at least, it's a bit of a crazy mind, is the only true route towards a more sustainable industry and making construction work in the long term. Call it what you will, building partnerships, collaborative working, or helping each other. The construction industry relies on strong connections to get things done. I'm talking about working together as a more cohesive unit to get the sh stuff done. So in this episode, I'm going to share my top 20 ways to collaborate that will benefit you as well as the rest of the industry. By this, I'm not here to cover the more obvious contractor, subcontractor type relationship. We're focusing on reciprocal gains rather than direct payments for services. Now, aside from this podcast, I'm looking to build a network, a database, if you will, of individuals and organizations that genuinely want to build a collaborative industry by getting involved with each other's projects. Not for payments, but because they actually give a sh they want to get stuff done. The best part is we'd like you to be part of it. So here's what you have to do. Step one, go to our website. The link is in the show notes. Builddifferent.marketing forward slash become hyphen collaborative hyphen partner. Step two, complete the form and click submit. Step three, you're, um, you're actually done. Nice one. See you on the other side. We're always looking out for amazing people and amazing companies to join us in this collaborative effort. So do something amazing. Sign up. There is also another link in the show notes to a blog that accompanies or complements this episode. So check it out if reading stuff on screen is more your thing. If reading stuff on paper is more your thing, check it out, print it, then read it. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into the episode. Here are my top 20 ways to collaborate that benefit you and the rest of the construction industry. So number one is joint content creation. Collaborate on creating blog posts, articles, or videos that showcase both companies' expertise and promote industry-related topics. This can be really powerful if both parties have a prominent presence on each other's platform, and it encourages engagement for each organization or individual. Number two is podcasts <coughs> and webinars. Co-host podcasts and webinars where clients can share their knowledge, present case studies, and engage with a broader audience. Alternatively, do your outreach to see if there are any podcasts or webinars within your specialism or your niche or the broader construction industry that are looking for expert guests just like you. Number three, cross promotion on social media. Share each other's content, events, and achievements. Celebrate them on social platforms. This will help reach a wider audience than just creating your own content. Number four is guest blogging. Invite each other to contribute guest posts on respective websites. This will tap into a new audience and it will utilize both organizations or individuals' expertise to build your own brand and educate an audience that is yet to discover your talents. It's definitely worth checking out and something that I've done personally. Number five is infographics. 
create visually appealing infographics together that highlight industry stats or trends. This can be a great way to get more value from other content such as blogging, reports and surveys. If you or a collaborator have a top-notch graphic designer, then you already have the talent in your midst, the skills to create that kind of magic. And let's face it, I think the industry can do with a bit more creativity. So let's utilize infographics more, but collaborate on those infographics to get that information across in a creative way. Number six, co-branded marketing collateral. Designing and distributing co-branded brochures and flyers isn't just another way to get your name out there in some shameless promotional way. Kind of is though. But it can support other organizations that are part of your network and provide services that complement your own, as well as enhance the brand awareness for both parties simply by being associated with each other. Number seven, get yourself on a thought leadership panel. Participating in joint panel discussions as a thought leader in the construction industry is not only a great way to collaborate, but it's also an opportunity to network amongst other panelists and impart your industry knowledge to a wide range of stakeholders, especially if the discussion is being filmed or it's a live event such as a seminar or exhibition. Number eight might seem a bit obvious, but it's networking events. Organize joint networking events or industry meetups to foster relationships and generate leads through other people's organizational network. It's best to provide something of value to get the most number of people attending these things. And rather than calling it a networking event, it's best to deliver it as an opportunity to learn and um, mingle with like-minded people. However it's dressed up, always make sure you over deliver on any promises made and the right people are invited for you to over deliver it to. There is no point in delivering things to a room of tire kickers. At number nine, we have workshops. Whether you're searching for or actively pushing that you deliver workshops, they can be a great way to impart your knowledge by focusing on a specialism to individuals if it's an open workshop or entire organizations run behind closed doors. This could be reciprocated, allowing organizations to learn from others as well. That could be on the same day, over a duration of a few days, or spread it out over a number of weeks. Number 10, market research, industry reports, and surveys. Conduct joint market research to identify emerging trends and customer preferences. Collaborate on producing annual industry reports or surveys to generate media interest. It's important to note here that there are a lot of industry reports and surveys, and they should only really be done if you know and understand the market you're aiming to assist, the importance of what you are doing, and you and your collaborators are skilled at conducting and creating a report or survey as well as doing the research. Number 11 is ebooks. Co author an ebook or white paper on a relevant topic, positioning both you and your collaborator as industry authorities in that area. It's important to note again that there are a lot of ebooks out there on particular topics. You're kind of listening to a variation of that theme right now, and it should only really be done if you know and understand the market you're serving and what you are doing has some importance or significance to the audience. There's kind of similar themes to each one of these, isn't there? In terms of the importance and significance, the target audience, your specialism, knowing and understanding it. But that's kind of what we're there to do. We want people to highlight our specialisms for us in collaboration. And we want to reciprocate that by highlighting their specialism and what they bring to the table so our audience can benefit from it. Always think about your audience. Okay, number 12, trade shows and exhibitions. Might seem a bit of an obvious one, but trade shows and exhibitions has always come at an eye-watering cost and sometimes feel hard to justify as the ROI can be difficult to measure unless you are simply focusing on 
sales, for example. Sharing exhibition space is not only a great way to reduce the cost to attend, but it can increase visibility. You can pool costly resources. You can build on or develop stronger relationships with those that you're collaborating with. Plus, the after party's better, let's face it. Number 13 is joint press releases and case studies. Why not issue a joint press release or case study for major achievements, partnerships, projects, or events to maximize media coverage and benefit from a wider pool of contacts? There's also an opportunity to benefit from the wider internal skill sets, such as videographers, graphic designers, animators, copywriters, and other creative roles, which may not be part of your own organization, or you may be able to offer their assistance, skills, and abilities to other collaborators. Number 14, social media takeovers. Social media takeovers can be great as long as you have value to give to a different audience and the socials you are temporarily taking over have an audience that is engaged and participate in the conversations you are starting or trying to start. You can also reciprocate this and allow your own followers to benefit from someone else's expertise. Even join in with the conversation to ramp up the engagement. Number 15, cross industry collaborations. Partner with companies from complementary industries to expand market reach and offer different services and information to your own audience. This works particularly well when the products or services are complementary to your own and provide your audience with a way to save time, money, or resources. For example, an architectural practice could cross-industry collaborate with project management software, allowing other organizations to benefit from a seamless transition from conceptual drawing to the management of the build. Number 16 is resource sharing. When looking to collaborate for the betterment of the industry, it doesn't have to be a service skill or expertise you offer. It can be other resources that create value for others, such as sharing office space, meeting rooms, and other facilities, as well as offering any surplus equipment, machinery, or tools that are not being used. This can work particularly well with organizations that work remotely or with smaller contractors that don't have the capital to invest in new technologies. Number 17, Community and local business engagement projects. Team up for community oriented construction projects to give back and enhance the industry's reputation. This can be related or unrelated to your line of work. As it is localized, the connection between what you do and what you support doesn't have to be that cohesive. It's the localization and what you are supporting that is key. Plus, probably gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling afterwards. Number 18, knowledge sharing events. Organizing your own events can be time consuming, but can be a great way to collaborate with multiple organizations in one go. It provides them with a platform to share best practices and industry insights with each other. You can run knowledge sharing events, both open to others to attend or behind closed doors and make them more exclusive. It depends on what you are trying to achieve. Number 19, training and skills development. Collaborate on training initiatives or provide your services to other organizations in order to share your wealth of knowledge across the industry in a structured way. This can be really helpful to upskill a workforce and improve overall industry standards. You name it, there will be a team out there that needs to know more about it marketing, health and safety, IT, design, trade skills, BIM, management, processes, data analysis. The list is kind of endless. Unlike this list as we go to number 20. God, that was seamless. And number 20 is industry-wide data analytics. If there is one thing we need to get better at in the construction industry, it's managing and analyzing the mountain of data we are producing. This can be a daunting task for an individual or even a single SME. Plus, without getting too psychological about it, the perceptions and internal biases that are created could present problems with the final analysis of that data. 
In collaborating on collecting data, you'll have a broader scope of information to work with, and analyzing this industry data in a collaborative way can result in identifying trends and opportunities that individual analysis may not uncover. If you're sharing this information industry-wide, collaborating also makes the output more authentic and less self-serving. Oh, there you have it. 20 ways to collaborate to make the construction industry better. I would love to know which ones you are doing, you want to do, or indeed you need our services to help you with.